This video is on the integrating essential skills topic of data interpretation. And when we're talking about data interpretation, we really want to focus on being able to look at data that is in charts or graphs and then be able to apply that data with whatever skill it may be related to the question that you have on the ACT. So this skill can also be beneficial to you on other sections, especially the science section where you have to look at a lot of data from charts and graphs and make some interpretations. So this is a skill that will expand into those areas as well. One thing that I always recommend is when we're looking at data and charts, if it's presented to you in a question, more than likely you're gonna need to use it. Sometimes they give you extra information, but if you have any charts or data, it's always good to look at the units in the, that are labeled on that chart to help you understand what you're looking at. And that may give you a clue on how to solve parts of the problem. So here we have an example of a pie chart or a pie graph here. And sometimes we see these that where we're given the whole chart represents the whole of whatever we're looking at. In this case, it looks like it's four teams that have scored points. And the full, rep, the full circle represents the total of whatever there is being presented. Here we have the, each of the four teams. And the data here could be represented as percent, or they could give us numbers. And to do that, we would just add up all the numbers, and that would give us the total. And if we needed to find a percent, then we could take each individual number and divide that by the whole. But this gives us a graphical view of whatever it is we're presenting. So if we have an example, if 525 total points were earned by these four teams, how many points did team three earn? So what we want to look at, in this case, it's the yellow section. More than likely, when you're on the ACT, you're not going to have a colored chart. There could be a black and white uh, version, or it could be labeled with, within the chart. But for our purposes here, we're going to use the colored. And here, team three is represented by this yellow sector. And so that is at 10.9%. So we know we have a total of 525 points. We're going to multiply that by the 10.9%, which remember is 0 0.109 as a decimal, and you get 57.2. Now sometimes we have to look at different relationships between variables that are given in a graph. And this is an example. It actually comes from a science section, but we're seeing more of these type of questions even on the math. It may vary in terms of the subject matter because in this case, it's talking about time and a lipid mass. That's what I, I get that information from looking at the labels on my chart. And the question says, as time increases, what is the effect on lipid mass? And we see lipid mass is represented on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis. So as time increases, what is happening to the lipid mass? And let's just look at each one of the cases. So this is not a typical question. We're not really looking for a particular answer choice, but we're gonna look at what each graphic represents, what each graph represents. So F, we're looking at as lipid mass begins to increase, it hits a maximum point and then it begins to decrease. And so we have almost the, the, the triangular figure there. Now let's look at option G, what is happening here, this straight horizontal line. As time increases, lipid mass remains constant. So that's what we're looking at there. It stays the same. In answer choice H, we see that over time, lipid mass decreases. We have that almost right angle figure. And option J, as time increases, lipid mass increases. So that just gives you an idea of how you can read some type of graphical representation as it's presented here. So sometimes we also have data summarized in a table. So in this particular table, we're looking at total AP scores for a particular year for all students and then the different scoring values and how many students scored at each of those levels. So a typical question you may see is what percent of students earned a five, we're looking for a score of a five, on the 2016 AP exams, and it says to round to the nearest hundredth. So what we'll need to do here, first we need to find what the, to the total number of students that took the test, what number that would be. So we're going to add all the numbers in the column that are labeled under number, 
we'll get a total for that. And then we're asked specifically about those that earned a five. So we look at row that is related to a score of five, that's 664,898. And we divide that by the total and we get a 14.13%. So here's another example of an ACT type question. Pause the video here, work this question, and come back and we'll work it together. We're using the same data from the previous example and the, the data in the table. And it says in 2016, about what percent of AP tests were scored a three or higher? A three or higher. So we're looking at anybody that scored a three, four, or five. So from the previous slide, we found the total number of students that took AP exams there that scored a one through five. And so we have that total number. We need to know the number for that scored a three, scored a four, and scored a five. We take that number, add it up, divide it by the total, and we get 58% scored a three or higher. So that's option D.